sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Welcome, brothers and sisters. I pray that you're having a blessed day and finding strength in our Lord amidst the challenges of this world. Today, let's take a moment to remember that as we follow God's commandments handed down to Moses, we are not just obeying ancient laws, we are expressing our love for God. And here's the beautiful part. As we take one step towards him, he takes two steps towards us. Today, we're diving into the truth of discerning through the gay pride and LGBTQ movement through the lens of truth and scripture. These teachings are not just relics of the past. They are living words filled with power and relevance for our daily lives. They are God's blueprint for a life of abundance and grace. So join me as we explore how discernment can transform our walk with God and open the floodgates of his blessings in our lives. Together, let's unlock the full potential of living in God's grace. It's a joy to be here with you today as we delve into a topic that is both timely and timeless. Our world is rapidly changing with new ideas and movements emerging at a pace that can be hard to keep up with. Among these are movements such as pride and the LGBTQ agenda, which have gained significant traction in recent years. These movements raise important questions about identity, love, and acceptance. Questions that deserve thoughtful and respectful consideration. But as followers of Christ, our first and foremost guide in answering these questions is the Word of God. It's crucial to remember that our authority comes not from the shifting sands of societal norms, but from the solid rock of Scripture. Today, we will examine these contemporary issues through the lens of the Bible. We will seek to understand God's design for humanity, identify the deception behind these modern movements, comprehend the impact of this deception, and finally, explore the hope and redemption offered by our loving God. As we undertake this exploration, let's keep in mind that our aim is not to judge or condemn, but to discern to learn what aligns with God's word and what does not, what leads to true freedom or what leads to sin. This discernment is not an easy task, especially in a world that often supports disagreement with hate, but it's a task we are called to nonetheless. Let's also remember that while we stand firm on God's truth, we are called to speak that truth in love, love that does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love that is patient and kind, not arrogant or rude. Love that always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. As we embark on this journey, let's remember the words of John 8, 32, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. In the beginning, God had a specific design for humanity. This design was intricate, thoughtful, and purposeful. It was a blueprint of love, reflecting the very essence of God himself. From the dust of the earth, God sculpted the first human being, a man, and breathed into him the breath of life. But God saw that it was not good for the man to be alone. He needed a companion, an equal, a partner. And so, from the man's side, God crafted the first woman. This was not a random act, but a divine orchestration. As Genesis 1.27 tells us, so God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. God did not make multiple genders or a spectrum of sexes. He made male and female, both uniquely different yet equally valuable. Each one reflects a different aspect of God's character and together they form a complete picture of humanity as God intended it to be. But God's design didn't stop at the creation of individuals. He had a larger plan in mind, the establishment of relationships, specifically the institution of marriage. This sacred union was designed to be between a man and a woman, a beautiful partnership 
where both parties complement and complete each other. Genesis 2.24 paints a vivid picture of this divine design. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Notice the language used here. The man is to leave his parents and cleave to his wife, not his partner, not his significant other, but his wife, a woman. This relationship is so intimate, so profound, that the two become one flesh. This is more than just a physical union. It's a spiritual and emotional bond that reflects the unity and love within the heart of God himself. Marriage, in its biblical context, is not merely a social construct or a legal contract. It is a covenant made before God, a commitment to love, honor, and cherish one another as long as both parties live. It is the bedrock of family, the foundation upon which society is built. This divine blueprint for humanity, male and female, marriage and family, is not outdated or irrelevant. It's not a relic of a bygone era. Instead, it's a timeless truth, a universal principle that transcends culture, tradition, and societal norms. But sadly, this divine design is under attack today. It's being distorted and redefined to fit the ever-changing whims of society. But no matter how much we try to redefine or reinterpret God's design, the truth remains the same. God made us male and female, and he designed marriage to be between a man and a woman. This is not a message of hate or intolerance. It's a message of truth and love. It's a call to return to God's original design for humanity, to embrace the beauty and wisdom of his divine blueprint. And let's remember, this is not just about adhering to a set of rules or regulations. It's about aligning ourselves with God's heart, his values, his vision for humanity. It's about living in a way that honors God and brings us true fulfillment and lasting joy. As Genesis 2.24 says, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. We must stand firm in this truth, not wavering in the face of societal pressures or cultural trends. Because when we stand on the truth of God's word, we stand on solid ground. In today's world, there are various ideologies and movements that have moved away from the principles outlined in the Bible. Movements such as pride and LGBTQ advocacy have gained considerable attention and support. As followers of Christ, however, it is crucial for us to see these movements through the lens of the Bible and ascertain if they align with the word of God. Let's start by identifying the misleading aspects of these contemporary movements. Take the pride movement, for instance, which encourages diversity and inclusivity. While these are indeed commendable causes, and as Christians, we are mandated to love and respect all individuals, the deceptive part comes in when these movements promote acceptance and endorsement of practices that are in direct opposition to the teachings of the Bible. Consider the LGBTQ movement. This movement fights for the rights and acceptance of individuals who identify as lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer. Although we should always strive to show love and kindness to all individuals, the Bible is explicit in stating that God's plan for human sexuality is a holy union between a man and a woman. When movements advocate for the normalization of practices that stray from God's original design, we must be discerning and stand firm on the truth of the Bible. So how does the Bible view these deviations from God's design? The Bible labels it as sin and rebellion. Romans chapter 1 verses 26 and 27 talks about how individuals swap natural relations for those that are against nature. This was seen as a vile passion, a clear departure, God's design for human sexuality. However, when discussing these matters, it is vital that we approach them with love and respect. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 15, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things. 
which is the head, even Christ. This does not mean we compromise on biblical principles. Instead, it means sharing the truth of God's word in a way that mirrors Christ's love. Speaking the truth with love means addressing these issues with sincere concern and compassion. It means defending biblical truth without belittling or disparaging those who may have differing opinions. It means extending the same grace and mercy that Christ extended to us when we were still wrapped up in sin. We must remember that our goal is not to win arguments, but to win souls for Christ. Our mission is to be ambassadors of Christ's love and truth. In a world that is steadily straying from God's design, we are called to shine the light of Christ in the darkness, not to condemn, but to guide the way to redemption. However, we must be cautious not to get caught up in the world's definition of love. The world would have us believe that love means accepting and endorsing all lifestyles and choices, even if they do not align with God's word. But genuine love, the love that God calls us to, is not about endorsing sin. It's about loving the sinner enough to guide them to the truth of the gospel. It's about showing them that there is a better way, the way of obedience with Christ. Speaking the truth in love also entails standing firm in the face of opposition. We live in a world that frequently mocks and rejects biblical truth. But as followers of Christ, we must be prepared to stand firm, even when it's not popular or easy. We must remember the words of Jesus in John 15, 18. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. Let us remember to do so with discernment and love. Let us not be influenced by the misleading aspects of these movements, but instead remain steadfast on the truth of God's word. Let's represent Christ's love and truth in a world that is in desperate need of it. When we embrace ideas and behaviors that contradict God's word, there are serious consequences. This statement may sound harsh, but it's not meant to instill fear or judgment. Instead, it serves as a loving warning, a beacon illuminating the path back to God's design for our lives. One of the most profound spiritual consequences of straying from God's design is found in the book of 1 Corinthians. Chapter 6, verse 9 reads, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. This verse doesn't just refer to specific behaviors. It's talking about a state of being, a spiritual condition of the heart. It's about living a life that is consistently and persistently at odds with God's design and his commandments. It's a stark reminder of the spiritual consequences we face when we choose to reject God's truth and instead embrace deception. But it's important to remember that these words are not meant to condemn, but to awaken. They serve as a mirror reflecting our own actions and attitudes back to us so we can clearly see where we've strayed. They are a call to self-examination, a prompt to question, are my beliefs and behaviors aligned with God's word or have I been deceived? And here's the beautiful part, even if we find ourselves in this place of spiritual misalignment, there's a way back. The Bible doesn't just highlight the problem, it also provides the solution. The path to realignment and restoration is repentance. Repentance is more than just feeling sorry for our actions. It's a complete change of mind and heart. It's acknowledging that we've strayed, turning away from our deceptive beliefs and behaviors, and returning to God's design for our lives. This is beautifully encapsulated in Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. This verse doesn't just call us to repentance. It promises us that when we do, our sins will be blotted out. Imagine that. Every mistake, every misstep, every moment we've strayed from God's design, wiped clean. Not because of anything we've done, but because of God's incredible 
mercy, and grace. And not only does he promise to cleanse us from our sins, but he also promises a time of refreshing from his presence, a spiritual renewal, a fresh start. So yes, the impact of deception can be severe, but it doesn't have to be the end of our story. No matter how far we've strayed, no matter how deeply we've been deceived, there's always a way back. There's always hope. There's always grace. It's never too late to turn away from deception and turn back to God's design. It's never too late to repent, to be cleansed from our sins, and to experience the refreshing presence of the Lord. Acts 3.19 calls us to repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And that, my friends, is a call to hope, a call to transformation, a call to ultimate freedom. Despite the deception and confusion in our world, there is hope, a beacon of light in the midst of disarray, a promise that transcends the disappointments and the despair. This hope is found in the unchanging, unwavering love of God, who, in his infinite compassion, offers redemption to everyone. Let's take a moment to ponder on the profound truth of John 3.16. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This scripture doesn't say God loved only the righteous, or those who have never strayed from his path. It says God loved the world, every single one of us, regardless of our past mistakes and missteps. His love is not contingent on our perfection, but rather on our belief in his Son, Jesus Christ. God's love is not a passive emotion. It is active, transformative, and redemptive. It reaches out to us in our lowest moments, offering us a way out, a way back to Him. His love is not a get out of jail free card, but an invitation to change, to turn away from the destructive paths we may be walking, and to embrace His design for our lives. This transformative power is not something we can achieve on our own. It comes from surrendering our lives to Jesus Christ and allowing him to work in us and through us. It's about recognizing our need for a savior and accepting the gift of salvation he freely offers. This transformation is not an overnight process. It's a journey, often marked by trials and tribulations. But as we continue to walk with Christ, as we continue to surrender our desires to his will, we start to see changes, old habits, old ways of thinking, old lifestyles. They start to lose their allure. Slowly but surely, we begin to embody the truth of 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. This doesn't mean that we won't face challenges or temptations. It doesn't mean that we will be perfect. What it does mean, however, is that we have a new identity in Christ. No longer are we defined by our past mistakes or our old ways. We are defined by his love, his grace, his mercy. And this is the hope we have, the assurance that no matter how far we've strayed, no matter how entangled we are in the deception of this world, there is a way back. There is redemption, there is transformation, there is hope in Jesus Christ. So as we navigate through this confused and often deceptive world, let us remember this hope. Let us cling to the promise of redemption, the promise of transformation in Christ. Let us remember that despite the chaos around us, despite the deception that seeks to lead us astray, we have a steadfast anchor in the love of God. For those of you who might be feeling lost, overwhelmed by the deception and confusion in this world, know this, you are not alone. God's love is reaching out to you. His redemption is available to you. All you need to do is reach out, accept his love, and allow him to transform your life. As 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Having understood the hope and redemption offered to us, it's now time to put that truth into action in our daily lives. 
Living out the biblical truth is not just about professing our faith. It's about standing firm in our faith and upholding the teachings of the Bible in all aspects of our lives. As it is written in 1 Corinthians 16, 13, Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit you like men, be strong. This scripture urges us to stand firm and be courageous in our faith. It's a call to action, to live out our faith boldly and bravely, to hold fast to the truth of God's word in the face of deception and confusion. But standing firm in our faith is not only about our personal spiritual journey, it's also about being a light in the world, reflecting Christ's love and truth to others. In Matthew 5:16, Jesus says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. This scripture reminds us that our actions, our words, and our attitudes can reflect the love and truth of Christ to those around us. Living out the biblical truth is not a passive endeavor. It requires action, commitment, and courage. It's about actively seeking to align our lives with God's design, about making conscious choices that reflect our belief in Christ, about standing firm in our faith, even in the face of adversity. It's about being a beacon of hope and redemption in a world that is often shrouded in deception and confusion. So as we navigate through this world, let us strive to live out the biblical truth in all we do. Let us stand firm in our faith, be a light in the world, and reflect God's love and truth to those around us. And in doing so, we not only draw closer to God, but we also offer a beacon of hope, a beacon of truth, to those who might be lost in the deception and confusion of this world. Remember, we are not alone in this journey. We have the love and guidance of God. And with Him, we are equipped to stand firm, to shine brightly, and to live out the biblical truth in our daily lives. In our journey so far, we've delved into the profound understanding of God's design for humanity, the deceptive tactics of modern movements, and the impact such deception can have. We've also explored the hope and redemption that is offered to us through Jesus Christ and the importance of living out biblical truth in our daily lives. As we wrap up our discussion today, let's take a moment to reflect on these insights. Has there been a time when you may have been swayed by the subtle deception of modern movements? Are there areas in your life where you need to realign with God's design? Are you living out the biblical truth in your daily life, standing firm in your faith and reflecting God's love and truth to those closest to you? This reflection is not a one-time activity, but an ongoing process, a journey towards a deeper understanding of God's plan and a stronger relationship with Him. It's about using the truth of God's Word as a compass to navigate through the complexities of this world. It's about being a beacon of hope and redemption in the face of deception and confusion. As we close, I want to invite you to make a personal commitment, a commitment to uphold the biblical truth, to stand firm in your faith, and to reflect God's love and truth in all you do. Let's make a conscious choice to align our lives with God's design and to be a light in the world. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love and guidance. We ask for your strength and wisdom as we strive to live out your truth in our daily lives. Help us to stand firm in our faith, to shine brightly in this world, and to reflect your love and truth to those around us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Remember, each one of us has a role to play in God's grand design. Each one of us can make a difference. So let's step out in faith, let's live out the biblical truth, and let's shine brightly for God's glory. Thank you for joining us today, and God bless you all. Let's join together now in a closing prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the wisdom and understanding we've gained through your word today. We pray for your guidance, strength, and wisdom as we navigate the challenges of our modern world. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, granting us discernment to recognize deception, love to respond with grace, 
and boldness to stand for your truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I would like to pronounce a blessing over each and every one of you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. May you walk in confidence knowing that you are equipped and empowered to live out God's design and share his truth in love. Go forth in the power of his spirit, shining his light brightly in this world. Remember, you are part of God's grand design. You have the power to make a difference. Step out in faith, live out the biblical truth, and shine brightly for his glory. Today we study the truth of discerning through the gay pride and LGBTQ movement, through the lens of truth and scripture. Your faith and the resilience of walking with Christ has hopefully been strengthened and inspired by this journey, and it's sincerest hope that I've been able to assist you. We're thrilled to share Bible Adventures for Kids is on the horizon. This fresh series is crafted to help children engage with the teachings of the Bible in a dynamic and captivating manner. You'll even recognize some of the artistic artwork from this video in the upcoming animated series. Please stand by for its release and let's work together in guiding our children. The forces of darkness are relentlessly targeting our children, and we must remember that they are the future of our world, the very heart of Jesus Christ's concern. We now extend an invitation to you, not merely to support our ministry, but to become an integral part of our divine mission and purpose. Please visit our website, awakeningrighteousness.com, where you'll come across a complimentary blog, a collection of Christian canvas art, and a broad assortment of Christian books that delve deeper into the profound teachings of the Bible. Each book is a beacon guiding you on your path to awaken the righteous version of yourself. By aligning with us, your support breathes life into our ministry, enabling us to disseminate the teachings of the Bible and ignite in many hearts. You hold the power to contribute to the saving of souls and to make a tangible difference on earth. Stay blessed, awaken the righteous version of yourself, and join us in this holy mission of saving souls. God be with you. Amen. Thank you.